If g of x is the transformation of f of x is equal to x after a vertical compression by 3 quarters, a shift to the right by 2, and a shift down by 4, letter A, write an equation for g of x. What do they even want to know? There's a lot going on. Let's first start with the original function. They say f of x is equal to x. You know how I feel by now about f of x. Just call it y. So that particular equation of the line is y is equal to x. What does that line look like written out on a graph? Well, it simply looks like this. A nice line that's drawn at basically like a 45 degree angle. Okay. Now what we have to do is take this particular line and we have to do a bunch of transformations. Okay. We have to vertically compress it by three quarters. We have to shift it to the right by two and then shift it down by four. So visually, this is basically what's happening. We have to vertically compress it by three quarters. What that means is kind of make it flatter, a little flatter. We've got to vertically compress this. Okay, so maybe it's a little flatter. It's not a 45 degree angle anymore. Something like that maybe now. Okay, and then what we have to do is we have to take the graph, shift it to the right by two, and then shift it down four. So something like that. So the new equation of this line should be some new <laughs> equation, right? It should not be y is equal to x anymore. It's going to be y is equal to, I don't know. That's the whole point of the problem. We got to figure this out. Now we know we have some positive slope here, right? And we know it's not going to be the same slope as this. Notice that the slope here was essentially one, right? And the slope on this one now will be three quarters of one basically. So which should be then three quarters X. And now notice the Y intercept here before it was, I mean, before it was directly through the origin now it has a y-intercept down here somewhere. It has some negative y-intercept. Okay. What is that? Well, I don't really know. I don't know what that is. But that's what we're going to try to figure out. Okay. So this, remember, is really the new line that I'm looking for, the equation. And this blue line represented the old equation here. Okay. Maybe what I'll do is I'll put that in, in red or something. So let's get the, where's the color? Hello. Here we go. Okay, so now how do we actually do this? Well, there's a couple of ways to view it. I'm going to give you a simple formula to follow. So let's take a look at this. So this will be, uh, by the way, this is my own notation. Okay, you probably won't find this in a textbook, um, but I think it works out pretty well. So what you're going to do is you're basically going to take your vertical compression, whatever that value is, and you're going to multiply it by the x value. Then what you're going to do from that is you're going to then subtract the shift to the right. What happens if the problem said then shift to the left instead of to the right? The only thing that changes now is this becomes a positive value. You might say, well, that doesn't make sense to me. When you move to the right, uh, isn't it positive? And this you're saying we're basically subtracting? Yeah, it works counterintuitive to how we actually think. All right. I'd show a doubt to you, but you know, why bore you? So here, um, the last piece then is going to be minus then the shift down. Now this works to how you would normally think. A downward shift in the y direction is negative. What happens if it said an upward shift of four, shifted up by four, this would have then changed into a positive and this would have been a shift up. Okay. So now once we have a basic formula like this, all we need to simply do is basically plug in the value. So watch. The vertical compression was three quarters. X minus then the shift to the right was two. Great. Minus then the shift down was four. And that's it, right? Now what I can do is I realize that this, I know this looks a little unfamiliar, but realize that this is basically an equation for the linear line. I have a y, or y is a function of x. It's not exactly in the form we like, meaning y is equal to mx plus b, but that's what I'm going to do next. I'm going to now reconfigure this algebraically so that I can get it into mx plus b form. So the first thing I'm going to do is basically then distribute the three quarters. Okay, so y is then equal to 3 quarters x minus then 3 quarters times negative 2, right? We would basically, the negative, the 2 would cancel, right? The 4 becomes a 2, and it's going to be negative 3 halves, okay? So negative 3 halves, and then minus now 4. Hmm, 
Now what can we do? Well, we can combine these like terms, right? So when we do that now, let me do it over here on the, on the right hand side. And we'll try to do it in fractional form, I guess. You could, eh, it doesn't really matter. You could do it in, um, in decimal form too, right? Three halves is basically, that'd be like minus 1.5, minus then four. So this works out to be three quarters X minus then 5.5. Okay, and if you needed to convert this into a you know particular fraction, you can. 5.5 is the same thing as saying 11 over two, because two goes into 11 five and a half times. So this is the equation. Now just take a look. Does this equation make sense based on the new blue line? Well, yeah, we said that the slope, if the slope originally here for the red line was one, then the slope now has to be three quarters of one because it was compressed by, th excuse me, by three quarters. So we got that. And then we realized that when we did all the transformations, the um, y-intercept now should be some negative value. And did it work out to be negative? Yeah, and it kind of is probably about accurate. Well, it's not, it is, it is accurate. But in terms of the picture, right, it looks like it makes sense. So this is indeed now the new equation. All right, so let's erase some of this beautiful stuff and let's make some room for the next part of the problem. So how's your day going? I hope you're having a good day, right? What better day is there than a day where you get to do graphical transformations? That's what I wake up in the morning dying to do. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? Okay, letter B. What is the slope of this line? Well, we already figured that out. What's the slope? Three quarters. So that's easy, right? Bada bing, bada boom. And letter C. Find the y-intercept. Oh, look, bada bing, bada boom. It's negative 5.5. So actually, we were done, okay? By finding an equation, we should be able to then... Um, find these simply the slope and the y-intercept, especially when we put it into mx plus b form. Now, always remember, you might be saying, um, you know, write, write an equation for g of x. And Andrew, you don't have it in terms of g of x here, you have it in terms of y. Yeah. The technically correct answer here should be then g of x is equal to 3 quarters x minus 5.5, or 11 over 2. So, you know, I... Whenever we have g of x, f of x, h of x, uh, you know, h of t, whatever, whatever, r of t, doesn't matter. We can always call that y. Just though at the end, it, I feel like it helps conceptualize in the problem. We're used to working with y and x. Uh, g of x or f of x is sometimes a little strange because there's an x in there. So I like to kind of take this and call it one single variable. But, you know, when you answer the problem, technically you should have it in terms of g of x. All right, so this would be then the right answer. Okay. And uh, yeah, we're done. So guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope this video helped. Please help us out by hitting that subscribe button, like button, and maybe even telling a classmate of yours. We appreciate it so much. I hope you do truly have a great day.